Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. I have my buddy. Finally, I have him on. Tom from Arizona. How are you? Good. We've, we've been talking about this for a Man. long time, so I'm, I, I didn't <laughs> think it was actually going to happen. Uh, you're, you're a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> Our schedules just never aligned, but here we are. It's finally happening. Anyway, buddy, before we get started on our topic, I always like to ask my guests, how did you become a Bon Jovi fan? All right. So I'm 40, just to put that in perspective. And growing up, I listened to 80s music, you know, so I wasn't into like the pop stuff. I all my early CDs at the time were all kind of 80s and First CD I ever had was Aerosmith. I got Big Ones, which was their uh, greatest hits album. Just fantastic. Yes. And then the second CD I got was Crossroad. And so I, I Aerosmith was a great, greatest hits. So I was like, well, let me get the greatest hits of Bon Jovi. And obviously fell in love with, of course you have it there. You, you probably have the CD and the vinyl and uh, for, the eight track or something. There you go. Okay. I love it. Um, the number one, I, you know, it's the number one Bon Jovi fan. This is this is great even uh, <laughs> having a chance to talk to you. So, uh, no, so I got Crossroad, fell in love with it. And then, you know, right after that was Crush in 1999. So that was the first, you know, new album that I listened to over and over and over again. Loved every song. And, and that was it. I've been to, I think, think probably 15 to 20 shows um oh, nice. interestingly enough the last show i was at you i think were also at which was opening night in omaha i was not at omaha okay i for some reason i thought you were uh okay so i went i went to omaha i looked at the you know there's a month of of shows i looked at it and i was like okay well based on my schedule and i'm like opening night would be fun because mm -hmm. i won't know the set list yep. and there's just some special energy so my wife was pregnant at the time, so I was drinking by myself, but we flew into Omaha that morning, hung out all day, met a bunch of fans, went to the show and just flew back. So it was in and out, but that was great. Um, got married, uh, I think seven years ago now. So she came down the aisle to Hallelujah, which I love that song, but I think John's version of it is the best. Did you do Bon Jovi's version of, of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Bon Jovi's version of it. Yeah, which which was, I mean, I just think his version of it is the best. And I think that that's like as good as it gets live. I mean, I just love I love when he plays that live. I think I've only probably saw it once live. Um, and then our first dance, our first song was to always. Wow. I have no ability to, to dance. So I actually took dance lessons. So I was in like this dance ballroom playing always over and over and again. And she <laughs> taught me a dance. And so that was, yeah. So I, I, I took dancing lessons to yeah. that, but you know, that's, that's it. I mean, I big time fan. I have not been to a runaway show yet, uh, which I really want to go to. So I'm hoping they do more of those. I know you've probably been to every single one of them, but that's on uh -huh. my, that's on my Bon Jovi bucket list. Man, yeah, you, you, I, I, I say this to everybody. If you are an absolute diehard, you will absolutely a hundred percent love these trips. They are. It is a a different event. You know, it, it, you see John in a different light. It's more intimate, and you know he does you know songs that you would never see him do with the band. You know. Yeah, um, you know, just really deep cuts, rarities, and stuff, and then you know, Q and A. You just see John in a different light and a different mood, and and it's just awesome, you know. And 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 you know, besides the whole Bon Jovi aspect of it, you're also meeting other Bon Jovi fans that love the band just as much as you. And at least for me, chances are I know everybody at these at yeah. these events, you know. But you know, and it also you make new friends as well, and it's it, you know some some of the People I'm, I'm really close with, I've met at these trips. So, you know, it's a weekend of fun, but it's a, a memory that you always have. And I, j I just love, you know, like even just taking my wife to a couple of them have, have been great too. So, yeah, I, I've been to quite a bit though. And I, I'll always say that they're the best Bon Jovi events you can go to. Absolutely. Do you, do you feel confident that they'll do more of those? 
Yes, I do. I feel pretty yeah. confident about that, but not this year, but you know, we'll see what 25 brings. I'm, I'm pretty confident though, you know, but we'll Good. see, you know, Good. I, I always say if, if it comes to the point that, you know, they do book one and John isn't doing so good vocally that week, I, I'd be okay with just him doing a and a and tell stories and, you know, just do a longer photo op maybe and do autographs or, you know, take time with each fan or something. You know, I, I'd be okay with that if we don't get the performance. Okay. You know, and yeah. I, I, I know for some fans, rightfully so, they'd be like, well, I want to see him perform. Well, so do I, but take what you can get at this point, you know, you know, either, yeah. either, way, I'd well, be, either way I'd be happy. And there's, there's also, he may also be able to do shows like that. He just can't do three nights of two and a half hours for weeks and weeks on end. So, you know, there may be an opportunity to still play music, just not be a touring band at the level he wants. And he seems, you know, stubborn. And I say that as a good thing, but it's like, if he can't do it, he doesn't want to do a show a week. He doesn't want to do a limited schedule. He wants to, you know, go out there and do 50 or a hundred shows or do nothing at all. Yeah. My whole philosophy is I believe in him and I will, if they ever announce a tour, if they ever announce a show, if they ever announce a runaway trip, I will be there to show my support. I will have a good time because I don't know about you, but I have a sense that the, maybe not the end, but the end is near, you know? Yep. And so just, Take it while you can and go enjoy seeing your favorite band with friends who love the band as much as you. And one day, you know, a lot of our bands right now are just, you know, Aerosmith, for example, I'll never get to see Aerosmith now. And I wish I did, you know, so for the people out there that are just hateful and spiteful and just mean, fuck off, you know, I know. <laughs> just let, let people like us go and have fun and, and you know, um, but that, that kind of brings us into our topic of the night. And uh, I've been wanting to talk about this for quite some time and kind of saved it for you. We are going to talk about just the idea, not saying that it's happening, but just the idea of a Bon Jovi residency. Now, yes, for those that are listening, that you probably already know that the band had, had done 10 nights at The Rock, which is in, at, in the Prudential Center in New Jersey. And they did that for 10 nights in 2007. That was just to play and support of the Lost Highway album that turned into a tour. And then I, in 2010, they did how many nights at the O2 in London? How many nights? They, is it 10? I had 10 in my mind, but I could be wrong. I think it was 10 as well. I think it was 10 nights. Uh, you know what? I think it, it doesn't matter. But yes, yeah, so the two residencies, and then they, they both, I think. Every single night on both residencies sold out, if yeah. I remember correctly. And you know what's funny about residencies? So for people, I, I just like to be clear because I know some people don't, well, what's a residency? A residency is where a band or an artist will stay in one place, one venue, and they'll do like a string of shows through the course of a couple weeks or a month or two. Um, you know, a few years ago, a lot of bands, even John has has kind of said, that that's where you go to die in your career. You know, a lot of bands were like, I don't want to do a residency. That's going to be like the end of our career. You know, a lot of artists look down at it. But now I think in the, in the last five years, bands have really started to embrace it, you know, because of the, the, the grueling schedule of touring and having to tour the world and being away from your families. At least if you're in the same area, you could bring your families or there are some bands like might even just live local they can go home after the show, you know? Um, so it's a great chance for bands just to stay in one place. And then us, we could just go fly to see them. And, you know, what I like about residencies is, you know, for like you and me, we go to, we go to see Bon Jovi multiple times on each tour. And I love going to different cities and being able to see the city, you know, like I, I would have never gone to Milwaukee just to go to Milwaukee. But last tour, I went to Milwaukee to see Bon Jovi. So I, I sightsee the city and then I see the band at night. But what I really love about a Bon Jovi concert is, is being able to see them in the same place, like back to back shows, you know, where you, you see them one night, go to sleep, like the next day, it's another show day. So a lot of bands are doing it, you know, Billy Jewel, 
Um, Britney Spears has done it. Who else? Adele. Yeah. You know? Well, so I saw I saw Britney Spears in Vegas. I've seen um, I saw you two in Vegas, which we can we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but you know, I mean, Celine Dion did Vegas forever. Aerosmith did Vegas. Uh, Lady Gaga did Vegas. So you start naming these names, and it's like, well, those aren't all retirement tours, and no. they're incredibly lucrative. I mean, the so you you two at the Sphere, six hundred and sixty thousand tickets, two hundred and fifty six million of revenue. The band made a hundred and seventy million and yeah. did forty shows. I mean, it's 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 insane. Uh, it was only four shows, but uh, Fish sold 30 million uh, in tickets for four shows at the Sphere and an average of $400 a ticket. And then you know, the secondary market was was way higher. But yeah. it's, it's, it's insane. So, and, and from what I understand with U2, we, we got a private tour of the Sphere and U2 was popping in Thursday, doing the show, popping out Sunday. I think they all live in LA or at least have a house in LA. So, you know, it was in and out and got to kind of live a normal life in between and no wear and tear, obviously flying private and staying at the four seasons in Vegas, but it, it's not a, it's not a bad gig. And, you know, you have to think too, from a fan's perspective, well, if we just park in Vegas for a month or two months or three months, people from all over the world can come to us. They're going to have a great time and yeah. it's, it's gotta be a lot easier for them. And, and the money's probably better because you're not packing up these tour buses and going from city to city. Yeah, all the trucks and stuff. You know, and just from like Bon Jovi's perspective, especially John's, it's no secret John doesn't like torn anymore. You know, yeah, and I, I don't blame the guy. I, I think the pandemic has kind of taught him to, it's okay to slow down, enjoy time with family. And you know what? He's earned that. And so I, I think the idea of torn versus a residency Maybe on their perspective, you know, but I, I can speak for myself. I would be, as a fan, I would be okay of seeing them do a residency instead of a tour. Now, obviously there's places that John really wants to go to, you know, like probably, you know, Wembley or, you know, somewhere in Japan, you know, but like my idea is do a residency, you know, if the band was like, okay, this is it, this is going to be the last shows that we'll, that we'll do. Um, do some shows in Madison Square Garden, you know, do a few nights uh, in the summer at uh, Giant Stadium, where, wherever the stadium is called now. Um, the Sphere, uh, Vegas, well, I guess the Sphere is in Vegas, you know, uh, and then kind of go overseas and, you know, Japan and Australia and the UK and, you know, all those places and just kind of celebrate your legacy and just, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you too, I think it, they did a really good job of, of honoring their fans too. I mean, you know, and I think this is true of all the concerts at the sphere, but the, the uh, general admission on the floor, you can just get so close. You're right there. If you're crazy enough to camp out, then, you know, you can be front row without, you know, not having access to it. They brought some fans uh, to like a prime private room and took pictures just randomly, just people they thought were like big fans. It wasn't about making money. So like, I, I, I and, and I, and I know John and, and Bono are, are friends. So I, I, I was hoping some of this would rub off. I know he was at either opening night or one of the first nights um, of the U2 show. He said it was incredible. We could never do something like this. He said, and I quote, we, turned it down so he he says that they turned down the opportunity obviously with his voice but i just wonder if he catches the bug to to do it there at some point and you know of course my mind starts wondering and it doesn't matter whether it's sphere or um any any residency but like then i'm like well man you could you could construct the perfect show mm -hmm. you know if you, if you really said okay we're going to just do something special and there, there's so many just unique. I know you've been to far more concerts in general than I have, but there's just some really unique ways that you can honor your entire catalog in a show or feature a certain album. And has anything come to mind to you, like things you'd want to see out of a residency? You know, one thing that I will say that I really liked about uh, about you know the 2007 and 2010 residencies was that it was different set list every night 
you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's something to if, if obviously if you're touring the world, bands just have and Bon Jovi since this house tour, you have the same set list basically every night because you're because just because you're doing the show here, Japan wants the same kind of songs tomorrow. That when you're doing a residency, chances are, you know, fans like you and me, we're gonna go tonight and we're gonna go tomorrow night. So you gotta switch things up a little bit. Obviously, you're you're still gonna do the hits like Bad Name and It's My Life and Prayer and Want It and all that stuff. But you throw in some rarities and throw in some deep stuff. You know, and that's that was like the beautiful thing about 2007, 2010 was getting a lot of those deep cuts and you know the set lists were always there and bon joey's always been known to change up the set list but um so from a set list perspective you could really change things up um a visual aspect now obviously you know i want you to kind of talk about it here in a second when you went to see the u2 at the sphere i think a lot of the reviews that i've seen about the sphere is that it's not just about seeing the band but it's also the the visual aspect of um seeing the band you could probably touch more light on that but bon joe has never been a visual band you know like with kiss you get the fireworks and the makeup yep. and the the light and so with bon joe you just get a band on a stage and that's what you're there for which is great i think if this sphere is an opportunity for the band i think that they would have to step up their game and and really do a visual um yeah, you you have to get and you I mean the thing the the interesting thing with you too was and, and and the visuals were ten out of ten like watch go watch clips on YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, but what I thought was interesting is all of that artwork was done by the guy that's been their art director forever. So this guy, I mean, he he can't be a spring chicken, right? He's got to be like 60, 70, 80 years old. He created all that artwork, so it's not like it's. You know, it doesn't have to be like highly technical, you know, someone that's been doing it for a while. But, you know, you start to think about because the the visuals for at least for you, too, you know, each song had its own theme. It was almost like its own like mini movie. Um, so, you know, like there was one that was it started off with like Vegas back in, you know, like the 1500s and 16 and seven. And it like then it showed the history of Vegas while a song played. And so you you have to think about like what visual imagery would you attach to certain songs? Like, could you do something crazy Western for Wanted? Well, yeah, that'd be really cool. Sure. Hallelujah! Could you do Places of Worship? Um, you know, Blood on Blood. Do you do you do like a, a Jersey thing? So I you know Runaway. Like the you know is do you, do you have like stuff of them playing in small bars? Like I you start to go through the catalog and you you think about the the imagery and stuff, but it's uh it, it it's wild what you can what you can do and i'm not the creative type to where i could do that but the right person i mean it's it's fascinating and i i want to correct myself because earlier i said that bondo has never been a visual type band i say that in the aspect of compared to someone like kiss now obviously bondo you know they they have done really great you know, lighting or staging, and they've done great, you know, visuals, you know, on the, the big screen, you know, like, like in 2010, I loved the, you know, how they did the heart and dagger, you know, the, yep. the sword going through and it flying or, you know, during living our prayer, they'd have, you know, a hundred fans singing from their homes on the, on the screen. Um, so, you know, in that aspect, they've been really good visually. Um, but there were a couple, but there were, but to your point, there were a couple of tours recently where it was the stage. Yeah. Exactly. Like this, like this house is not for sale. They had the big set and that was pretty cool. But then it feels like the last couple tours, it's just, it's literally, I mean, I feel bad for the people that aren't crazy like us on the floor. Cause like, they're literally looking at the band. They don't even have anything on screen. I don't think yeah. for a couple of those tours. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to remember the 22 tour. I mean, this house was, it, there was cause like, like during God bless this mess, they had, you know, newspaper clippings, on this giant screen of like you know tabloids and blah 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 but 22 tour i really don't think there was much visuals to be honest with you yeah. i have to go back and look but i mean either way i mean like like fans like you and me like we're there to see our favorite band that's all we give up yeah and, and i'm and i'm and i'm close enough i'm not going to be watching it on a screen anyways now yeah. so you were you were in nashville right the last show yes 
Yes. yes, yes so yes. do you do you prefer starting the show or ending the show with prayer? You know what's funny about that is I, I, I've been a fan of this band since 2000. And I've been to multiple shows on every tour since. And I remember the early years as a kid seeing prayer as an opener. And I think it was great then. But in the last 15 years, I haven't seen prayer as an opener in so long that I've missed it as an opener. And so I was, you know, I remember being in Nashville and I remember maybe 10 minutes before the show started, I remember I saw Matt and, you know, Mike Rue and, and, you know, Obi and a few of the other Bon Jovi management guys. And I saw venue security, you know, starting to rope off this area because we were on the floor a few rows back and you're facing the stage to the right and you see, you know, the security telling people to get out of the, you know, move, get go to your seat. And then they're starting to rope off that area. I'm like, I've been to enough concerts yeah. to know what's going to happen. I was like, John's going to, John's going to start the show somewhere. And I remember the, the lights went out and I remember I'm, I'm looking all around like, where's the, there's, I didn't see no B stage or anything. And all of a sudden I, I see like, like a string of flashlights coming down and I could see John's American jacket in the, in the dark. And all of a sudden the spotlight hit John and, you know, we got to, and then he's just fucking standing on the audience's chairs and and everyone's like trying to hold him up and stuff. And they opened up and I looked to my wife and I go, Oh fuck. They are doing prayer as it open and this is you know right after the pandemic and it was, it was kind of ending but still you had to be safe and so that whole 22 tour john never did that rightfully so because if you got sick tour's done you know and so yeah. so the, for the last show you kind of just risked it, it risked it and so it was pretty cool to see prayer as an opener but i do have to say now that the band is they are a legacy band now you know, they're 40 years yeah. in. They have their whole legacy to show you. Do and, you, before you go to shows, do you look at the set list? Absolutely. I know. It, well, you know, with, with having to do this podcast, the 22 tour, I, I did multiple, sh- like Omaha, I did an episode that night about this show. So, oh, okay. And, yeah. and, and, and so for me, every single tour, you know, with what I do on Twitter, it, it sometimes it's a lot of work. And on Twitter, every single night of every tour, I post updates. I stay up late, even if it's in different time zones. I stay up late and I, I'll post updates. And so I'm up to date with what's going on with the show, the set list and this and that. Um, so I know everything that's going to happen by the time I go to the show. That's but, right. Yeah. But with prayer, I love it more as a close and song because it, it's that very anthemic. It's just get it, you you can't reach that level of hype after prayer. You know, from maybe maybe not maybe not from like our point of view, but from a general public point of view, yeah. there's no better hype than prayer. And that's why you gotta save it for the end. You know, but now I say that, but the way they did, I'll be there for you. Oh. As the final song of the last show of the potentially the last tour. Who knows? I cried like a big baby at the end of that that show. I mean, and, and I wasn't the, the the house lights went up after the band left, and all my friends were crying too. And it just it felt. You know, and at the time, we didn't know what was going on with John. We had suspicions, but we didn't know. You know, we- you it might have been a picture you posted, but there was a look on his face. Cause I saw, I saw the picture and again, I think it was you, whether you took it or you posted it and I'm like, is he done? Is this it? So I, I, you know, and, and of course this was before the documentary and stuff, but I saw, when I saw, you know, that opening with that closing and that picture after I was like, you know, I wish I would have been there cause this feels like it, it might be it. Yeah. You know, just from my point of view, and, and a lot of other fans that night even thought the same. Obviously, we know John was struggling vocally. And, you know, 
John's speech right before they did I'll be there for you, he was like, you know, I want to thank you for all your loyalty and support, your friendship over the years. And he he's he's done that speech in previous tours and all that. But it felt different that night. And I remember when he said, you know, I just we just wanted to see if we could still do this again. And like even me saying this is, is giving me chills. And I remember that night, oh my God, like is he gonna announce that this is the end or whatever? obviously he didn't and then they did i'll be there for you but i tell you the ending of that when he does the ad libs and you just see him on that stage just embracing it and i think the biggest i don't want to say heartbreak but kind of a heartbroken moment was you see him go down the stairs and you see him stop you see him turn around and take one final look at this sold out arena of everybody just singing along and having the time of their lives. And, and you see the look on his face and just taking it all in and then gone, you know, I mean, and, and, and I said to my wife and I said to all my friends that night, I said, you know, if this was the last show, I'm glad I was here to experience it. Nothing might, nothing, I don't think anything could top that moment because it was just special and it was magical and it was sad but I was like, if this is the way that they end their touring legacy, I got to see it. Yeah, it's got. I mean, it's got to. It's got to end at some point, right? It's going to end at yeah. some point in our lifetime, probably. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it's it's funny. I, I started thinking about different different ways to do a residency because you know something creative. And I mean, obviously, you can just play the hits and and you know do do that. But um, I, you know, for for us like fans. One thing I thought could be could be kind of cool is like if they if they went through the catalog in sequential order. Now it may not end the right way unless you did an encore or something, but the idea of like starting out with runaway and then kind of building through the years and having imagery that, you know, kind of complemented them getting older. And it's like, this is our legacy, this is our career, this is our catalog. I thought that could be, and I don't know if anyone's ever done that before, but I thought like a 40 year sequential tour, because the thing that's interesting about them is, you know, they never stopped, right? Like Aer Aerosmith hasn't made a song in 20 years. I think some of these bands like the Eagles or whatever, yes. haven't done a song in 40 years, right? So it's like, you get a band like this and it's like, then I go back. So when I think right before Forever came out, I saw, I went back and just started two things. First of all, listening to everything, but then listening to the entire album because John gets pissed about streaming and rightfully so. So I'm like, out of, out of respect to him, I'm going to listen to the entire album. And you know this, but like, man, there are just some songs out there that they never played live or, you know, haven't played in years. And I'm like, this is good stuff, like really good. Um, I, I just had so so much fun discovering all those albums, but like they're, I just think they're like a unique band because more than almost anyone, they never stop making music, and and even the even the worst albums still had some really good songs on. Them. Yeah, I, you know, I, I know just from you know interacting with other Bon Jovi fans and my friends and all that, the big thing that they, that people want the band to do is do Slippery in its entirety. Or have a nice day in its entirety, and all you know. Yeah, John Vocally, I don't think can, and and rightfully so. Those are songs, really high song, you know, high songs vocally. You can't do, you know, like like I'd love to see Wild in the Streets again. Yeah. Oh, now, one cool thing to do with Wild in the Streets is make it a crowd participation song where, you know, John will sing the verses. And then the chorus comes in and just let the audience sing the, the those high really high notes, you know? Um yep. you know, I, I but, but like I said, I, I'd love to see an album played in its entirety, you know. Well, if if it were me, and I and I I, I had that thought too, if it were me, the album would be New Jersey. New Jersey. See, uh, yeah. I, I think if we got lucky to see any other any album in its entirety, it'd probably be forever, which I, I'd love. Even if it was like a runaway trip. Um you know, Forever but, was excellent. Yeah. But the thing is, is that if you do a residency, you you you, you know, I always say 
a, a Bon Jovi's or any any show, you know, you have maybe ten percent diehards in there that want nothing but deep tracks and rarities. Yeah, and the crazy ones like you and me. <laughs> and then you get the ninety percent of fans that only know the hits: "Prayer Wanted," "Bad Name," "It's My Life," those that stuff. And then they sit down for the songs that they don't know. Um, so unfortunately, you know, bands, Bon Jovi included, have to cater to the general public. And so you do these residencies. You know, you, you're getting a lot of tourists and stuff. And they're like, "Oh, Bon Jovi's playing. So let's let's go see them." You know. And then they they go there. They they're gonna expect to see the hits, you know. And then you know, there's fans like you and I that are having a time of our lives enjoying these hits, but we're waiting to see you know like a deeper cut, you know. And then obviously there's John who wants to to do a song for him. Um, so it's it's definitely finding that happy medium for fan you know diehards, the general fans, and then himself. Um, so what's your what's your favorite non hit? Oh man, you know my top five memory that was a single that was a hit, but I would say probably Shine, um, Roller Coaster was kind it, it it was out there on radio, so I can't count that. Stick to your guns and I want you. Those were my other top five. So, so I I don't have a top five, but my favorite my favorite ever is Stick to Your Guns. Stick to your guns. So I'd love to see them. They, they've done that live a, a few times. Okay. But one that I would abs if if John asked me right now, what song would you want to see live? I would pick I Want You. Now, never been done live except twice. And it was by fan request, 1992. Or no, it was in 1993 and then 2016. John did the first verse and chorus acoustically. And obviously that's probably how he would do it now. And I'd be okay with that, you know, but that'd be something else that would be cool if they did a residencies, you know, going online and, and post and, you know, what songs would you like to see? And then of course you're going to get people that's going to post prayer and bad, you know, but you know, like, you know, for me, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, just taping my little fingers off. You know all these different songs. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another one. I another uh, one for me is uh, if that's what it takes. That would be great. But seeing 1995 JBJ sing that song, you know, sure. Or, yeah. or, or hearts yeah. break, hearts breaking even, and and um, you know, like that. I'd love to see. I want you live. You know, but especially at, like in 1992. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, a residency has so much potential for a band, and a lot of bands are doing it now. And I think Bon Jovi should do it again. You know, I, I, I'd even set up for MSG residency. Well, that'd be that'd be fantastic. I forget what year it came out, but that the MSG DVD, I can't remember what year it was. Was that around twenty ten? Uh, oh, wait. Or was that later? Oh, oh wait. wait. Okay, that, that was that was a phenomenal set list yeah it was you know what's fine i didn't even know, so i went to uh i went to that and you know this was 2008 so you know social media was kind of taken off but i was still active on myspace at the time and and on the fan club uh forums nowhere did i ever see that it was being filmed and uh, i remember we went to madison square garden and they had signs everywhere saying that you are being filmed for a DVD. So I was like, oh, that, 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 that's awesome. And like, and then we didn't hear anything for like a year. And it got released right around the same time the circle and the documentary came out. You know. What's your favorite song they cover? That they glad all over. Okay. And and ironically, they opened up with Glad All Over the last night of Madison Square Garden in 2008. They opened up with, and I think it just had so, such edge and just, it, it just hyped you up. I loved it. What's yours, Hallelujah? Yeah, it, I know it's, I know that's kind of an easy choice or like a, a I'm sure a lot of people say that, but I, I just, phenomenal. Yeah. That's, that's best, best, song, best song on the new album. Best song on the new album, I would say Waves. I, I relate yeah. to Waves a lot. You? Waves. Waves? Yeah. yeah. 
that was it was fantastic yeah uh it's uh that was the song that really first grabbed me was because you know, i was listening to the lyrics like i like it, it's funny because there, there's songs that find you in a certain point of your life for example like when i was a kid these days came out or it didn't come yeah. out it was already out I, but i was like 2000 2001 so and i was nine ten years old and these days was like the last bon jovi album that i got i put it on it's not that i didn't like it but it's like i couldn't relate to any of those songs because i never went through heartbreak i never went through loss i never went through hard times i'm just a happy nine-year-old kid as i got older being a teenager and starting to go through breakups and death in the family and you know kind of harder times you relate to those songs and those songs mean more to you and now i'd say these days is probably one of my favorite albums i just love listening to but waves you know just like where i was where i'm at in my life that song just like really grabbed and pulled me in and you know it, it, it songs have a way of finding you when you really relate yeah. to it you know yeah yeah so. it was uh it was fantastic yeah, absolutely. Was there anything else that you wanted to say about a, a residency? Any ideas that you have? You know, I so you know, I started jotting down some things that like you could do in a Vegas residency uh, at the Sphere, just because it was top of mind for me being there to to see you too. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I I I could see you know, like uh, I I'll tell you I'll tell you one thing for me that would be like a. Uh, a uh, dream would be seeing, uh, and I don't think he's ever done it, but covering my way by uh, Frank Sinatra. I think he did on. I mean, he had to have at some point, right? Yeah, it, it was like a prelude to another song, but I think he did. Keep the Faith tour might have even been on the Crossroad mini tour that they did, but yeah, it, it, it's been done once or twice. Yeah, so I, I was thinking, like, because, you know, you do some uh, covers. Like, I, I, I'd i love to see him do a cover medley. Like, you do, like, a Jersey thing and maybe mix in, like, Born to Run, you know, or um, I thought that could be kind of cool. I, You know, also, I don't know how much McCartney, you know, because he, he loves Paul McCartney. I, I don't know how much McCartney he's ever done, if any. But I was like, man, to, like, hear him play, like, Yesterday or In My Life, um let it be like if you mixed a couple of those in just as a tribute to beetle paul i'm like oh that that would be cool too um, yeah. i love the i love the acoustic in the audience stuff so i mean you can do i mean hallelujah in the audience to me would be like um better roses obviously is phenomenal i uh, you know always i mean even if you did like two or three of those uh, I mean, a Amen is kind of like a knockoff to Hallelujah, and it still was awesome in the crowd. I think maybe two tours ago, but um, but I think maybe it was that and Better Roses. I can't remember, but yeah, I don't. I I just think that there's, you know, you could. I mean, if you just played the first like five songs off forever, like in order, I think that would be awesome. Like you could easily mix those in too, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I, to me, like the Vegas residency would be a bunch of greatest hits, killer visuals. Um, yeah. If you're not going to end with prayer, you, I mean, what I, it's funny you say that about I'll be there for you. Cause I'm like, that, that's how I would end it if you were going to start with prayer. But you can or also end it with this. It's, yeah. Oh, God. That'd be, that would be awesome too. Yeah. That, that's a, that's another great song. Um, and then, you know, and, and part of why I love It's My Life, too, is because the Frankie said, you know, did it my way. And my, my grandfather, who I was very close to, uh, his name was Frank. So, you know, the the Frankie thing, like as a kid, like when I'd hear that and like It's My Life was like the first like big hit song that I was into. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know. And that, that always just holds a soft place in my heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that that's the beautiful thing about music is there's certain songs that you hold to you know that you hold very near and dear because it brings you back to a memory you know for example you know Lost Highway you know you talk about the Madison Square Garden shows that was the last show that I ever did with my dad before he passed away and so that'll always be my favorite show because of that reason 
you know, I even have the T-shirt from this that show in a shot because it was a special made shirt for those two shows. Um, so I have that framed, and you know, but the songs itself, you know, that they're songs from the Lost Highway album that remind me of my dad and the memories I I had from that era, and so these those songs mean more because of the memories to you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was this was awesome. I I appreciate you having me on, and you know, I just want to say thank you for everything you do. I mean, I I know it's a lot of work. I know it's thankless. I I know it's the internet, so I'm sure that you know sometimes it's not always a hundred percent positive. But just your ability to kind of keep the Bon Jovi flame going between tours and between albums, and I, I you you make being a fan. Uh, really enjoyable and and i hope that you know at some point you and i get to meet in person and uh, enjoy a show together i sincerely appreciate you saying that it, you know it, it the what i love about the bon jovi fandom is that i love being able to come on you know twitter or instagram or what have you or even just doing this podcast and being able to connect with other fans who love this band just as much as me and quote unquote get it you know because you and i we've sat here for the last hour essentially fanboying over something that's not even planned or or happening and we're just spitballing you know ideas and stuff you know you know another example i love to use is that you know after a concert i'll come home and my colleagues or my friends or even my wife will ask me how was the show and you want to be like oh my god this happened this happened this 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 and then i just want to hear you say that it was good but when you talk to another fan you could go hours and hours talking about a show you know of how what happened that night and st you know like after shows i always love doing fan meetups because you get to sit there and just talk about the show for hours and it, it, it's yeah. great so it, it, it's an amazing community that we have you know and that's that's the beautiful thing about social media is that you do find other great people who love the band just as much as you you know yeah and i you know, even last last show i went to in omaha i mean we were just you know we didn't know anyone so we were just sitting in a couple of different bars and every person that we met was so nice and you know you had the moms with their kids and they, you know like <laughs> it was just it was we had a blast and like, people were just like oh can we buy you a drink and it was just you know it was it was unlike any other kind of pre-concert vibe i think i've ever seen just because everyone was like so just friendly yeah, absolutely. I, I'll say some of the closest people that I know or that I'm friends with are from the Bon Jovi community. There's people that I've met through this fandom that I talk with every single day that, that we meet up, you know, a few times a year. And, and it doesn't even, it's not even Bon Jovi related. You know, we'll talk about things that are going on in our life or, you know, or just meet up for a weekend and hang out. And it, it, it it's great. You know, it, it really is. And so, that's why I love doing this is because it it, it connects people. And, and that's another great thing that, I, that I, has come from, you know, the whole social media thing is me posting stuff and seeing people connect through that way. And you know, even, even the podcast, I've had people, you know, because I'll tag whoever was on the podcast and people will, um, you know, follow that person and, and message that person and say, I really like what you said. And I went to the Omaha show too. And, you know, then you just see friendship awesome from that it's awesome you know yeah that's what that's what life's all about right just human connections and that's more important than any possession or anything else it's just having fun and experiences and exactly. doing it with nice people so exactly well anyway buddy cool. don't hang up yeah i'm gonna end the recording but thank you for i <laughs> we have been working at oh yeah for like months now and it's so good to have you you were a great guest and i appreciate you taking the time to come on today Thanks for having me and thanks everyone for listening. Well, I'll be hopefully listening to many of you on future episodes. So thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. Thanks.